hey guys what's up so today i've decided to film a video about all the books i've read so far this year because i don't tend to do wrap-ups because i don't read enough books to make a full bit video about it um and i've had a really slow year this year like my reading's been really slow in february i read no books at all so i've had quite a slow year um i'm really behind on my reading challenge so i just thought i'd do this video to sort of compile all the books i've read so far this year and talk about them tell you what i thought of them and things like that really so i'll get straight into it so this year so far i've read four books and i'm currently reading my eighth book which i'll tell you about later um and you might have seen it in my recent um reading vlog screen time challenge and um, a lot of these a couple of these books are from that so i'm just going to get out my good reads so then i can tell you which books i read in what order and i can also tell you what i, I rated these books so the first book i read in january was room by emma donahue now you might have seen me talk about this book in my blind date with a book challenge and i'm also going to be doing another one of those in july so definitely look forward to that but this is the first book I read this year. It's a thriller um, and sort of like contemporary fiction. Um, it's set in Ireland and it's the first Irish book I've ever read um, by an Irish author, I believe. And basically it's about this young woman who has been kidnapped as a as a teenager and basically she's got this child called Jack and he's five years old and Jack narrates this book it's from his perspective and it's really really interesting it is quite captivating because you're seeing the perspectives of a five-year-old like the narration you can sort of question whether it's a reliable narration because he's, he's literally just talking about what he is seeing from his point of view and I feel like Emma Donoghue doesn't make it too childish it feels like you're actually reading a, an adult novel but it's from a five-year-old's perspective and even though sometimes you might think the words wouldn't really fit a five-year-old it's sort of got to be able to satisfy an adult audience so you can understand why she might have used some language which a five-year-old typically wouldn't use but even though he has been deprived for the majority of his life, um, his ability to create good vocab and language, and the language he uses is really strong and he sounds so clever um, for his age. And the way he um, sort of thinks of things and views things is really, really interesting. It's really, in it's, I find it so interesting to get that sort of point of view. Um, so it's basically a story about how they get out of that situation, how, because they're in one room, they've got to share this room for their whole lives basically and they basically get into the point where they are sick of it and they need to get out of this situation. So it is about that. So I rated Room a 4.5. Like I said, it was a brilliant start to the year. I don't really remember what put me off giving it a five stars because it is genuinely a really good book and I've not seen the film but I'd definitely be interested in watching it um, so if you have seen the film let me know if it's any good um, it is so interesting the way that like I said the way that it's written that's basically the first book I read this year so let's get into our second so I have read a few books on my kindle this year so if there's any that I have read on my kindle like this second one I'll just put an image of the cover on the screen so the next book I read was a romance by Kate Canterbury called In A Jam now I've seen a lot of people talking about this um, I feel like when I read it it wasn't very talked about it's a small town romance and it's set on two farms um, but it actually starts off in the city and it's about Shay who has recently broken off her wedding with her ex-fiance and she is left by her step-grandmother a farm. Um, I can't actually remember the place where she's left it but she's left her a farm and she got and basically the idea is that she has to have she has to marry someone within that year to keep it and I think there's another thing that she's got to do to keep it but I can't exactly remember but she's got to marry someone within that room in order to keep it so when she goes to this house she goes to have a look at it and um, so one of her friends from high school so it's a friends to lovers trope one of her friends from high school 
um, lives in the farm next door and she thought he'd left but he'd actually stayed at the small town and he's looking after his niece. So it's sort of the love story between them and how it blossoms. I rated this one a four stars. I really enjoyed it. Again, it was another romance that really got me into the spirit of the year and I really enjoyed it. I think I read this at the start of March because I didn't actually finish any books in February. I don't know why. I just I just don't think I was like I think I was too busy to like even pick up a book. So the next book I picked up this year was it The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. Now I rated this a 4.5 stars. So again, it was a really good romance. Um I definitely think about the characters still. It was just a really interesting concept and the romance was really good. I do feel like it's a bit, it is an insta-love romance. So at the start I was a bit like, whoa, this is really rushed. And I sort of felt like they didn't really give the chance to like build that romance. I sort of felt like the chemistry was there straight away. And they sort of just like moved past all the issues without really sorting them out. And I don't feel like they fully got over them issues because it was like insta love but I do I did still really enjoy it and it's basically about Jess who is a statistician and she is friends with this girl who is a journalist and basically there's this guy that goes into the coffee shop they're always in and he they're really interested by him and one day they ask what sort of thing he does and he talks about the fact that he owns a company where you can match um, compatibility based on your DNA so it's sort of like a tinder but based on actual DNA matches so um, you can actually match with people who are compatible with you by your genetics. I, I really liked the relationship and I really like the chemistry between Jess and River, the guy's called River, I didn't even mention that but that's what his name is and I really enjoyed the chemistry. Um, I think it's a great book. I definitely would recommend reading it. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I got through it quite quickly, I think, because I enjoyed it that much. I constantly wanted to read it. And yeah, I just really, really enjoyed it. So that was a 4.5 stars. I've actually read quite a few 4.5 stars books this year. So the next book I read was All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. I think I read this in April. Um, one of my first books of April. And I really, really enjoyed this. Again, it's another 4.5 star read. I'm so reluctant to give things five stars. I don't know why, I don't know what I'm expecting. My standards just must be extremely high. Um, but I'm constantly giving things 4.5 and I'm like kind of questioning what could make this a five stars and sometimes I'm there and I'm like I actually don't know but I just want to give it a 4.5. Um, I think I only read one book which was a five stars this year so like I'm very very picky but this is a young adult um, romance I'd sort of say it's sort of a bit of a tragedy as well I'm not going to go into it on that sort of scale but it's basically about this guy and this girl it's two point of view so you've got Finch's point of view and Violet's point of view and basically they both have ex they're both going through something like for example definitely read the trigger warnings as well because I would if I was going to read this book because it can be quite like triggering probably for some people Violet's lost her sister recently and Finch just doesn't seem like he's got a purpose in living he doesn't know why he should be living and he sort of just lives every day as like i sort of feel like he lives every day as like another chance to be alive another reason to be alive and he tries to find that reason but at the same time he's suffering a lot with his own mental health and it i don't know whether you'd say he has like quite a suicidal mindset because in some ways I feel like he's actually trying to survive and that something's pulling back from that and his mental state sort of takes that away from him um, whereas some people might say no this is like a suicidal mindset like this is how he's coping with it and things like that and I just I'm not too sure how I stand on that but it's definitely a tragedy um, and it's definitely a romance I again I felt the chemistry between the two from the first point of views and I really really enjoyed it um, I feel like it's a great read if you're definitely interested in that sort of book. It was nice seeing them develop as characters and sometimes I'd get frustrated and be like, oh my god, just, just do this, do that, like, why did you do this, why did you do that? 
but it was really nice seeing that sort of character development and I'm really happy with this book. I actually want to see like what happened afterwards and things like that. I just really, really enjoyed it. I do feel like the ending was a little bit rushed, but I also feel like it was dragged out too much because I feel like the plot like sort of ends in a certain place yet yet Niven carries it on and I feel like it's not necessary to carry it on but you know that's just my personal opinion and that's probably why I didn't give it a five stars. So the next book I read was Before the Coffee Gets Cold. I actually did a reading vlog on this so if you want a more in-depth like reaction to my opinions on it then definitely check out that vlog. Basically, this is a Japanese novel. Again, another place that I haven't read a book from before. And I'm really happy that I'm really reading more foreign literature. That was one of my goals for this year. And it's basically like contemporary fiction. It's really interesting. It's about like time travel. Basically, if you sit in the seat, you can travel to the past. And um, in order to get back to the present, you've got to make sure that you drink your coffee before it goes cold. I really, really enjoyed this the stories were really interesting. It's obviously a short story. The sun is like blinding by my house right now and I have blinds in this room. So like the lighting is gonna make me look stripy. That it makes me think about like who I went or who I'd go visit in the past. And it makes me think a lot about um, what it would mean to me, what I'd wanna say to someone, what what I would want basically from going to the past and it's really really interesting it's quite magical as well the fact that you're transported to the past you don't get a lot of like time travel stuff and I really really enjoyed it and some of them made me a little bit emotional so yeah I definitely recommend this and I'm really looking forward to reading the second book so yeah that is before the coffee gets cold oh I don't think I actually give my rating for this I think I gave it a 3.75 stars. It was just off of four stars. I feel like you've got to really engage with this novel and I feel like if you aren't really in the mood for it, you're not gonna enjoy it. I feel like you sort of learn about the characters and I feel like if you're not into like short stories or short novels, I feel like you probably would enjoy this because you've really got to like imagine it and think about what you would do in that certain situation. So definitely consider that when you're reading, gonna read it, but yeah. I enjoyed it anyway and I would definitely recommend it so yeah so the next book I read was Three Swedish Mountain Men by Lily Gold now I read this on my Kindle and basically I enjoyed this romance it's a romance and it's basically a reverse harem romance now I didn't actually know what that was until I read into the book it did say it on the cover but I still didn't know what it was um, I didn't even bother searching it, I just started reading the book. So if you're going to read this book, go search up what a reverse horror romance is. It is a very spicy book as well, so if you don't like spice, then definitely don't read this book. I didn't realise how much spice there would be, and I think that was what sort of brought its like rating down. Like I only rated this a three stars. Like I said, I still enjoyed the chemistry between the characters, I still enjoyed sort of the plot and like it building that connection between all four characters so there's what she called Daisy, Eli, Riven and Cole and basically it was really interesting seeing their chemistry. It's about this teacher who's been exposed so in, or in order to get away from everyone trolling her she decides to go to Sweden and she's in like the middle of nowhere. She meets these three guys and basically she lives in their house while her car gets fixed because she gets into an accident and they all sort of like help her and there's like a romance that builds between them all so it's not like a love triangle it's basically just a romance between all four of them and it's not like a love triangle or anything but i didn't realize how spicy it was going to be and that's why it brought my rating down like i don't mind a bit of spice but this went too far to the point where there's more spice than there was plot and i feel like it could have been developed on a lot more rather than the amount of spice because I feel like I had to actually skip quite a few scenes because it was just getting too repetitive and I just wasn't enjoying reading that those sort of scenes constantly especially because it gets quite re repetitive. So the final book I've actually completed so far this year was Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca. Now this is a classic and it was written in 19... I think it was pub first published in 1938 
it's basically about this woman who looks after this elder this older woman i don't actually know how old the woman is mrs van hooper i don't actually know how old she is but basically this woman we don't actually know her name um she is looking after her she sort of is like a lady like she's sort of a maid more or less and she does things for her um and basically they're on a trip in the south of france in monte carlo and she meets this uh she meets maxim de winter who owns mandalay in court and it's set in a cornish place it's in cornwall basically i don't actually know if mandalay exists but it's set there she goes on a few trips with him and it's sort of they fall in love and then when she finally gets back to mandalay and she moves in she's sort of constantly comparing herself to his ex-wife rebecca and it's sort of the story of what happened to rebecca um how their relationship is affected by the fact that she's consumed by the idea of rebecca she's tormented by her presence which isn't actually there um because rebecca is alive um and Basically, it's that sort of storyline, and it's a thriller for me. I'd say it's a thriller for definite. Some people say it's a gothic romance, but I don't agree with that. I say it's more of a thriller. Um, I wouldn't really say it's a romance. I feel like romance is very much a subplot of this story, but I do really, really enjoy it, and I actually gave it a five stars. It was the best book probably that I've read this far this, so far this year. It was so interesting, like the mystery elements. I really enjoyed that more than the romance, like the finding out what really happened to Rebecca and sort of the way that she, it's sort of psychological as well because it's a way that she is captivated by the idea of Rebecca and how like the idea of Rebecca totally consumes her and it affects her relationship and it's really really interesting I really enjoyed it and just imagining the glamour and the luxury of this time period um, was really interesting as well so I'd definitely pick it up if you haven't already it's a perfect classic I think it's definitely got summer vibes because of the fact it's set in it's the south of France it's set in Cornwall so I'd definitely check this out if you haven't already so guys that is all of the books I've read so far this year um, I've only read seven books so far this year I'm really behind on my challenge like I said but the current book I'm reading is um called this poison heart by kaylin baron um and i am enjoying it i don't think it'll be higher than a three than a four stars for me but i am enjoying it and i'm looking forward to finishing it and yes yeah, so i hope you enjoyed me going through this sort of rundown of what i've read so far this year I, re I did this last year i think and i enjoyed filming it so i wanted to do it again so you could sort of see a mini catch-up of what i've read all year because like i said i don't really do wrap-ups or anything i don't like go through every month going through like what i've read so i thought this is an easy way to see what i've read so far this year and if you haven't already checked out my goodreads then i'll put it on the screen and yeah I shall see you all in my next video. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye!